drop a like and do share leave your comments and do not forget to subscribe for more videos hi everyone welcome back to the course on introduction to material science and engineering offered by edupedia world the previous set of lectures we discussed about phase diagram and we saw the different kind of uh, invariant reactions that takes place in addition we saw the iron carbon phase diagram one thing which i mentioned while discussing phase diagram is that phase diagram is a equilibrium diagram it does not take into account the rate of a reaction or the rate of phase change but in reality any phase transformation has a rate of reaction therefore it is of uh, pivotal importance to understand what will the influence of rate on uh, different phase transformation that is what we will study in this chapter we will discuss about different uh, phase transformations and how is the kinetics of different kind of phase transformation so let us begin with the basics of phase transformation as i mentioned the phase diagrams are equilibrium diagrams that does not take rate into account right because they are equilibrium diagram by definition and uh, in real scenario obviously transformation takes time therefore this fact that transformation takes time can actually be a advantage to us we can tweak the transformation rate by uh, different uh, processes and thereby we can modify the phase that we can obtain because phase uh, diagram gives you a specific phase that can be obtained but in reality since uh, the rate can be different under different circumstances we can change the rate of reaction or uh, the change the rate of heat treatment and thereby we can modify the phases that can be obtained and this change in the phase that can be obtained will lead to a change in the ultimate property of the material because the property of a material is determined by the type of phases the properties of phases right the phase transformation can be of three kind it can broadly speaking either be diffusion dependent or diffusion independent process in the diffusion dependent process there can be either a change in the composition of the phase or there can be no change in composition of phase an example of diffusion dependent process with change in composition of phase is basically eutectic reaction eutectic eutectic or eutectoid reaction whereas a uh, diffusion independent process we'll see one of the most important example that will be widely used that is widely used in the case of iron and steel is martensitic transformation sitic transformation okay now how is the rate determined or what are the factors that affect the rate of the reaction transformation phase transformation consists of two different stages the first stage is nucleation and the second is growth what is nucleation nucleation is basically generation of the nucleus of the new phase only once the new nucleus has generated can the growth begin so nucleation can take some amount of time on its own and once the nucleation has uh, taken place once you have a nucleus then that nucleus starts to grow the growth also has a particular kinetics behind it it follows a certain kinetics which is dictated by diffusion okay so the nucleation rate depends on what is the driving force suppose you are trying to freeze water the nucleation rate will be faster lower the temperature if you 
keep the temperature at 0 degree Celsius, then the rate of nucleation will be quite low. On the other hand, if you take the water suddenly to minus 20 degree Celsius, the rate of nucleation will be very very fast. Thereby, nucleation will not take much time. Therefore, what is the, how much is the driving force for the transformation to take place? That will decide the rate of nucleation. Once the nucleus has formed, the growth will depend on what is known as Abrami equation. Okay. And uh, the rate of transformation will follow this trend. This is the graph which shows uh, on the x axis time in the logarithmic scale and the y axis is fraction of transformation that has taken place 0 to 1. Initially, nucleation will take a certain amount of time which will depend on the driving force. Once nucleus has taken place, it will the transformation will follow a sigmoidal curve, the rate of transformation, uh, the fraction of transformation. Initially, the transformation picks up, it becomes very fast and ultimately it again slows down. This relation is represented this kind of graph is represented by this relation, Abrahami equation. Fine. Now suppose that the driving force was very very low, then what would had, have happened? This nucleation would have elongated, the time for nucleation. And basically we would have had a graph like this, right? So more time would have effectively taken. If the nucleation happens instantly, then there will be no time required for nucleation or very less time required for nucleation thereby the transformation starts immediately and the fraction conversion against time would have been something like this fine now the rate of transformation also depends on the temperature so this rate of transformation how fast it is transforming will depend on temperature by this equation. Since it is, it is a diffusion driven process, if it is a diffusion driven process, higher the temperature, higher will be the rate of diffusion. Higher the temperature, lower this, effectively this is less negative, this is high, thereby rate of diffusion is high. So increasing temperature leads to rise in the rate of transformation. This is mainly because of diffusion being dependent on temperature. So if the temperature is increased in let's say this case and let's assume that nucleation uh, is not affected time of nucleation then the sigmoidal curve would have been something like this. Something like this. A faster rate of transformation. Fine. So what we saw in this slide to sum up is transformation takes place in two stages nucleation and growth. Nucleation rate depends on the driving force and uh, that growth stage depends on how fast the diffusion is going to take place thereby on temperature. Now further up phase diagram as I said do not indicate any time requirement because that is by definition considered to be always in equilibrium. It's considered that any diffusion which is required happens instantaneously. But in reality equilibrium scenario almost never exists during solid transformation. Uh, the reason again being that diffusion takes time and any process is never that slow that diffusion can complete to 100%. In reality during cooling transformation is shifted to lower temperature than indicated in the phase diagram. Okay so now think about this you are cooling a thing then if the phase transformation was supposed to occur at 700 degrees Celsius and you are continuously cooling what will happen is that because diffusion will require certain time the 
transformation will not be able to finish at 700 degree celsius or maybe even nucleation doesn't start at 700 degree celsius it requires further decrease in temperature therefore in reality during cooling transformation there is a shift to lower temperature lowering the temperature provides driving force for nucleation also lowering the temperature leads to more uh, basically it leads to a larger driving force and this phenomena is known as supercooling reverse condition if you are heating something then the temperature for transformation is shifted to higher temperature and now the term which is used is known as superheating so basically if uh, let's say we have 0 degree celsius water and ice ideally water should completely freeze at 0 degree celsius and form ice but if you continuously cool water what will happen is that the transformation does not complete at 0 degree celsius it might complete at let's say minus 5 degree celsius due to continuous cooling the, this is the super cooling that is taking place now you have ice you are heating it up it will not melt completely at 0 degree celsius because it is continuously heating the complete melting might finish at maybe 4 degree celsius depends on what is the rate of heating and this is the super heating that you have done okay and this is exactly the point I was trying to make that the rate of cooling or heating if it is more then the degree of super cooling or super heating will be more which means that if the water is cooled very rapidly then the degree of super cooling may be minus 10 degree celsius if the ice is heated very rapidly then the degree of super heating may be 15 degree celsius maybe it melts at 15 degree celsius completely so it depends on how fast you are cooling or heating fine so this uh, lecture was basically to inform you about the importance of rate I hope you understood the idea that rate is very important during a phase transformation and uh, the different stages during a phase transformation and how each stage is crucial from time point of view and why phase diagrams are not realistic representation rather they are they are idealistic representations in a world where equilibrium always exists with this knowledge we will further build and see different type of transformation till next class have a great day goodbye